In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how I actually messed up six figures of available credit on liabilities and not assets. But stick around to end this video because I'm gonna show you guys how the boy lost it and got it back. Let's go ahead and get into it right now. What's popping, guys? Your boy all boo. So I'm back around the video, hardest YouTube channel out here on financial literacy, man. Trying to teach you guys the game, all the strategies, and all the mistakes and pitfalls you guys should avoid in your credit journey. I made the mistakes, so you guys don't have to. So for that, man, I ask you guys to go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell notifications, man, to get up update on all of these videos again man nobody's going harder than us so it definitely helps me and my team whenever you guys like the video comment and also be able to subscribe so we can keep dropping more videos that you guys like let's go so basically what happened was when i was younger i was just coming out of college right and so if anybody really knows me right they know that i've been on credit for a while i was on credit since 17 my older brother he basically got a car finance and my parents co-signed he messed it up so after that they kind of were like nah we're good we're not going to go ahead and co-sign anymore for anybody so i actually bought my first car for my dad in cash right so as crazy as that sounds but i'm glad though so what happened was that after that i ain't gonna lie bro i was mad as hell so i was like man you know what i'm gonna go ahead and just get credit you feel me and then basically never have to rely on anybody ever again so <laughs> that's really what started my credit journey right just kind of my parents telling me that hey you have to go figure it out yourself and so when i was 18 i really got my first credit card it was a bank of america credit card it's probably like a thousand dollars they were trying to make money from all the young people and i was just about to go to college so i actually got that credit card and so when I was in college, where I was just really taking time to understand credit, what credit means, the background of credit, where money was coming from, and just understanding like the Federal Reserve, understanding fractional banking, and really understanding what a credit score was. So I really knew credit was literally the game changer, man, because I'm an immigrant, right? So my parents didn't really come here with much. So when I came to America, man, I was shocked. I was like, bro, people really live like this, man? Like, it's kind of crazy. You know, they're driving Ferraris, they got mansions, they got all these different type of cars. And I'm like, man, we're just, we're still in an apartment, bro. Like, what the hell is going on? And I promised myself when I was younger, I was like, bro, I'm gonna get rich for sure. Like, I can't do no below my means, saving, all that. Like, nah, that's not for me, bro. I'm good. So with that being said, I was like, dang, man, like, I gotta get on some money. So I kind of, when I did research and I was like really realizing, in my eyes, the difference was between the rich and also the poor was that the rich just simply had more money to invest whenever opportunities present itself, like recessions or even the pandemic. They have that money set aside as far as capital to be able to go ahead and actually take advantage of those opportunities. Because in rough times, let's face it a lot of the real estate a lot of assets are going to be cut in half so they're actually able to buy those assets right whenever they're half off and make a significant amount of profit so they're actually able to buy those assets half off basically and be able to actually make a profit later on and the only reason they get richer is because they have that capital set aside so when i figured out about credit i'm like man this is like light bulb in my head right like because that's the difference maker you can be able to go get a hundred thousand two hundred thousand just based off of having a social security card that's why when i see them immigrants man like they be coming here and they'll be working like say a trash man or in the restaurant and then you'll see them two three years later they're driving a ferrari they're driving a lambos and it's because they really took their time worked hard and also learned about credit to be able to actually leverage it so that's really the name of the game like in america everything's about leverage and so when i was basically in college i really got a mentor i was able to really just understand credit and then i was also able to like start building up my credit so i know if you guys are, have gotten funded or even are trying to get funded so the most important thing with funding right is that you guys take your time so if you guys are trying to rush the process or you guys are trying to get five different cards in like a three month span and you don't really necessarily have a lot of credit built up before that you're not going to get the highest limits because those banks want to be able to see that you guys have handled those credit card accounts for a long period of time and so anytime that you guys are first starting off with credit so first of all even if you're 18 right like until you turn 20 after two years is really when you're considered to have a real FICO score so the banks don't really take you seriously until you have a good amount of age and have shown them that you can be able to handle credit not just only at the time being but also throughout the years so that's exactly why i took my time to be able to actually get funded and so when you guys take your time get those credit card accounts ask for credit limit increases every 90 days and then in six to 12 months go ahead and run that funding sequence you guys are going to be able to get a lot more money compared to if you just did it off the bat so again don't take shortcuts because anytime you take shortcuts you shorten your money so let's go back to how i actually messed up right so i was coming out of college man and when i was in college i had a little business a clothing business you know i was getting in motion for sure but so i wanted to actually be able to get into bigger businesses right when i first got out of college i was just researching credit i was at the crib with my parents and stuff so i was at the crib you know what i'm saying trying to figure it out because when i graduated right i was at the crib just chilling researching with the folks helping them out because i mean i graduated i had a good degree and all that got like a high gpa or whatever that means but at the same time like i wasn't trying to get no job like i didn't want no job i like the business aspect i like working for myself 
loan. So I was like, all right, cool. Let me research some credit. So basically back in college, I even made an LLC in college. So whenever I ran those funding sequences, I got about $250,000 in available credit. So, I mean, I was balling, but available credit is not income, guys. You have to go ahead and actually pay that back. So what I actually did was invest into some businesses. So I got a semi truck, man. And then I also got some cars to put on Turo. And also too, I hopped in the e-commerce a little bit. So with that being said, I was basically investing a lot of money into these businesses. But what I wish I knew back then, right, was that you're not gonna be able to win in business if you don't know what you're doing. And a lot of times in business, you don't even know what you don't know. So that's the hard and tricky part, right? Cause it seems very sexy to be able to go ahead and get 200,000, $300,000 in available credit. But let's face it guys, if you don't know what you're doing in business, it's better off not to even have the money cause you're gonna end up in debt. And a lot of people won't even be able to muster up the courage to go ahead and retry that business again because they're so swamped into debt, right? So basically being able to understand that you guys need a mentor. I was never really big on mentorships, man. I was like, why would I pay somebody five, $10,000 for somebody to teach me something? I can research it. I can go on YouTube University. And so you guys can honestly do that. At the same time, I'm not saying you guys couldn't figure it out. But as far as the time that it will take and the mistakes you guys are gonna make, I was trying to sit there, man, and reinvent the wheel. But let's face it, you don't need to do that, man. We need to get rich now, like not later. So if I can pay somebody five, $10,000 and they can teach me how to be able to make $100,000. Is that worth it? Of course that's worth it, man. Because at the end of the day, that's gonna be more beneficial than if I just would've jumped into business, not knowing what I'm doing, jumped off the deep end and not knowing where I was gonna go or my next move was, man. So having a mentor was one of the biggest mistakes that I actually made starting off my entrepreneur journey, right? And trust me guys, I'm not even trying to sell you at all. At the end of the day, like that's just what I believe in. That was definitely one of the biggest mistakes and now I know a lot better, right? Now, the second mistake that I was making was that I was over leverage, right? And what that simply means is that I was spending a lot more without accounting for income coming in. So if I'm spending clothes, if I'm spending on cars, at the end of the day, we all rationalize it and be like, oh, we'll be able to make money. It's for our personal brand. It's for this, it's for that. Let's face it, guys. If you're starting off your entrepreneurial journey, save your money. Because trust me, business is not light and it's not easy. And a lot of times business goes south. So you definitely need to have some capital tucked away. Because remember, if you save your money, your money will save you. So with that being said, I was dumb on that end. So again, guys, mistake number two was that I actually over leveraged my credit and spent a lot of money on just dumb stuff, bro. Like, let's just face it. It was just stupid. I shouldn't have invested in that. But at the same time, now you know a lot better. So another mistake looking back, right, that I actually made was not knowing what business that I really wanted to go into, right? Sometimes you guys go on them podcasts and you listen to 50 different podcasts and you're like, oh, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start this business, this business, this business. And you don't even know what business you really want to start. And you don't even really know what business you're good at. That's a huge mistake that I actually made, right? I was listening to so many podcasts. I was listening to so many different business entrepreneurs. What you guys have to realize, right, is that not every business works for everybody. That one person could make that business work because it suits his skills and his strengths. And while you have the other person that would jump into the same business, but actually fail. So at the end of the day, what I realized, right, is that if you guys are gonna choose a business, choose a business that actually has your strengths in mind. So for example, don't go ahead and choose to start a social media market agency if you aren't good at social media, or even if you don't even like social media. If you're not good at marketing, then why would you start that business? There's plenty of other businesses that you would probably be good at, making sure that you guys are really in tune with your strengths and weaknesses. So now we talked about the mistakes, man. How did you actually run it back, Abu? What I did right was I learned about consumer law, removed a lot of negative items, and I actually paid off a lot of those debts so I can be able to keep that relationship with those banks. Now I can be able to still go to those banks today, but at the same time, I don't wanna go ahead and pay interest so I had to pay it off quickly. So just making sure you guys are smart with your money, right? And if you guys are going to go ahead and get funded and also be able to invest into businesses, what I would actually do is take your time, actually go ahead and invest into a mentor and be able to go ahead and learn all the information and have them walk you guys step by step so you can be able to learn the same information. Now, I know I gave a lot of gains to you guys, man. This video was really helpful. Make sure you guys subscribe and tap the bell notifications below to get updated on all the latest videos, man. Hardest YouTube channel out there. I'll see you at the top, my boy. Let's get it.